Hello, and welcome to our live stream. We're here with Dr. Brandon M. Scherer, a foot and ankle surgeon with orthopedics and sports medicine Baycare Clinic. He is board certified in foot surgery and reconstructive rear foot surgery and ankle surgery by the American Board of Foot and Ankle Surgery. We're also joined by Sarah Burton, a doctor of nursing practice or DNP. She's also with orthopedics and sports medicine Baycare Clinic. Uh, we're hosting a live stream today focused on foot conditions. Uh, we're gonna focus <laughs> specifically on bunions, hammer toe, uh, foot arthritis, and more. Uh, we'll learn about these conditions and treatment options available to patients. Before we get started, we want to invite you, our viewers, uh, to feel free to ask your questions in the comment section. Uh, if we don't get an answer to your questions during our live stream, uh, we'll be sure to answer them uh, shortly after our live stream concludes. Um, I guess with that, uh, thank you both for joining us uh, today. Dr. Scherer, let's get started with you today. Uh, the list of conditions that can affect the feet is, is quite long. Uh, that list ranges from non-surgical issues like athlete's foot uh, to conditions requiring surgery, like say a torn ankle ligament. Uh, can you talk uh, briefly about how common foot conditions are? Yeah, I mean, well, thanks for having us today, uh, Femi. Um, yeah, I mean, they're very, very common to get up, to, especially an ankle sprain is very common. Um, you know, today we're primarily going to focus on, you know, bunions, hammer toes, and, you know, generalized foot arthritis, in particular, um, big toe arthritis. Uh, but again, we're glad to kind of answer any questions that come in uh, as far as injuries or any symptoms that you may have. But uh, so, just, you know, to kind of get started and review uh, what are bunions, uh, we'll kind of throw up a diagram here or a picture and what that is, but basically what a bunion is, um, that's uh, where the first metatarsal, you have the long bones in your foot, the metatarsals, that's where the first metatarsal drifts inward, the toe goes the opposite way and starts to crowd the second toe. Mm -hmm. And that forms this, this kind of eminence, this prominence on the inside of the big toe. So it's not actually a growth of bone, it's actually more of just a deformity of the joint. Um, as far as uh, a hammer toe, um, that's, a little bit similar, but the deformity is in a different plane called the sagittal plane. So that toe typically will affect the second toe or the lesser toes of the foot. Um, but that's where you get that toe contracture where the toe uh, sits up. You sometimes you'll form a callus or a corn on the top of the toe, um, but that can be very painful as well, particularly in tight shoes. And then the third one we're gonna look at is um, we have foot arthritis, but in particular, we're gonna talk about big toe arthritis. So uh, big toe arthritis is probably the most common form of arthritis in the foot. Um, that's where you'll get loss of joint space. Uh, you'll get some spurring and sometimes some prominence on top of the big toe. Um, a lot of times people refer to it as the dorsal bunion where you just get this arthritic buildup on the top of the big toe, which causes pain and sometimes some grinding, grinding in the joint. So those are the kind of the, the, the three you know, in review. Okay. All right, well, thank you for that information, doctor. Uh, Sarah, let's get you involved here real quick. Uh, you often treat patients with each of these conditions, uh, Dr. Sherr mentioned, um, and more. Uh, in general, uh, what are some of the common causes behind these and other foot conditions? Thanks, Femi. So as Dr. Shear had discussed, a variety of these conditions can be a number of things from hereditary. There are adolescents that can have bunions, so you can get it from genetic wise. So that's a common theme that we see. Um, narrow shoes, he mentioned, to mm -hmm. have too tight of shoes or a narrow, what we call a narrow toe box. High heels um, that are after more than a few inches can increase it. That's why we see an incidence or higher incidence with women as well as inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune issues, they have more uh, degeneration in their big toes. So those are some of the common themes as far as why bunions can happen. Hammer toes are typically in relation to bunions just because of the, the deformity pushing over onto the second, third, fourth toes sure. uh, or from a bunionette. Okay, and then of course, uh, foot arthritis, I mean, is that just so, 
it can be it can be it can be overuse it can be um, as far as depending your activity level if you do work on uh, concrete if you work um, steel toe boots all day it can also be related as I mentioned to like rheumatoid arthritis some of the sure. autoimmune um, diseases psoriasis can ca cause sometimes degenerative joint disease or arthritis particularly we're talking about in the big toe but you can get it anywhere throughout the foot or, or ankle and also traumatic arthritis coming from an accident and in injury, um, an ankle fracture, a fracture in, in the toe itself, you can have advanced arthritis from that as well. Okay, Sarah, we're sticking with you for a sec. Um, we often discuss surgical options for treating ortho and sports medicine issues, uh, but are there non-surgical options that can alleviate even temporarily uh, some of the problems experienced with each of these foot conditions we're discussing today and really how effective are they? Absolutely. So there's always a conservative approach to everything. At some point as a bunion or hammer toe or even arthritis advances, we may have to look at surgical um, treatment, but non-surgical treatment does work, um, especially in the early stages, buying wider toe box shoes. We'll talk about that later as well. Right. Um, shoe stretchers, things like that, but there are treatments, there are different pads, bunion pads, hammer toe pads that can go over corns, things like that. But as it, as it advances, then sometimes we have to do more things, injections, and then of course, lastly, surgery um, to correct that am anatomical defect. Okay. Or arthritis. Okay. Well, great. Thank you both for your expertise. Uh, now I've got a series of questions for Dr. Scherer. So uh, Sarah, we'll catch up with you in a little bit, okay? Sounds great. Thank you. Dr. Scherer, yes. uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, foot conditions in a little bit more detail. So moments ago, you, you gave us the, the overview of what bunions are. So can you tell me who typically suffers from this foot condition? Well, in bunions in particular, it can affect the, you know, the, the pediatric population all the way to the elderly population. Um, so really, uh, there's a wide range, but usually it affects more the, the middle-aged uh, older individual. But again, you do see pediatric bunions. We treat those conservatively and surgically as well. Okay. So do bunions cause pain that warrants a trip to the doctor's office? Absolutely. I mean, bunions can be very painful. Um, it, as you can imagine, that bony prominence you, like you have up on the screen there, yeah. I mean, that, that foot's very wide now. It makes it very difficult to find an appropriate shoe. Um, a lot of times you'll get redness and pain along that area. Um, so you can imagine if you have to wear a steel toe shoe, trying to put that in there, it, it can definitely be painful. So Absolutely, they warrant a, a trip to the doctor's office and they can be very painful. Okay, do, do bunions tend to go away on their own ever or do they immediately warrant some sort of intervention from a foot specialist such as yourself? So they're not gonna go away on their own, um, but some people have bunions and they don't cause any discomfort. Um, but you know, the, they're definitely not just going to go away on your own. They are a progressive deformity, meaning that it will typically get worse over time. Typically, they become more, more painful later in life. The joints become more stiff. So it's definitely surgery is usually warranted more on the later end of the, the life of the bunion. <clears throat> in, in researching this topic, and I, I went through hundreds of images very similar to what we're, we're seeing on the screen. Um, I didn't notice bunions um, appearing on you know like the pinky so pinky toe side of the foot is is this the pretty much the placement of, of bunions is that normal um you know the most common place is the inside or along the medial side of the big toe right but they can affect the fifth metatarsal so the absolute opposite of that just be just before the fifth toe and they call it a bunionette or a tailor's bunion okay. um but and so we treat those conservatively and surgically as well they're actually fairly common um, but they just, you know, they just don't have the press like the, uh, the traditional bunion does. Right, right, clearly. Uh, so what are some non-surgical approaches then for treating bunions? You know, like Sarah mentioned before, a, a shoes with a wider toe box, anything you can get wide enough so it's not rubbing on it, uh, limiting some of the activities that flare it up, avoiding like a pointed dress shoe or a high heel will definitely Okay. help. Um, they make some bunion splints and spacers and pads you can put on them as well. But short of that, try those things. If you're still having a lot of discomfort, then surgery may be, may be the next step. 
Right. And then, um, I mean, at, at what point do I come into you and say, you know, I've tried all these things and uh, this is not getting better. I mean, what's your advice on that? I mean, if, if you've tried a few things and you're still having pain and you're concerned about it, the easiest thing to do is come on in and what we'll do is we'll look at it, we'll get an x-ray and we'll have that baseline x-ray so we can kind of monitor it if it gets more severe and, and kind of look at other deformities that may be uh, coming down the line. But I mean, just coming in, getting a consultation and, and just putting your mind at ease sometimes helps. Sure. Great. Thank you. Well, let's switch gears for a sec and let's kind of talk about hammer toe. Um, are there non-surgical approaches to, to treating hammer toe? Absolutely. Um, so the biggest concern with hammer toes is that prominence, as you can see there in the picture right in the top where it'll rub right. in your shoe. So what we try to do is pad that. They make some toe sleeves that you can put on there. They make what they call a crest pad where you can slide it over that toe and it'll kind of pull it down. Okay. Uh, wearing a shoe that has kind of a taller, a taller toe box so it doesn't rub. I mean, those are your conservative options. And to be honest, a lot of them work fairly well. Okay. Um, but as the toe becomes more stiff and rigid over time, you know, then you're starting to look more at the surgical route. Okay. So who typically gets hammer toe? So hammer toes, uh, like Sarah mentioned before, a lot of times they're in individuals that have bunions. So, you know, the big toe will drift over towards the second toe. The second toe doesn't have enough space. So it starts to drift up and you can kind of see the, the cascade of events. Um, a lot of times you'll see them isolated too. Uh, but again, most commonly they affect the second toe. Sometimes we see them on the fifth toe. Um, but, but usually you'll see kind of that callus and, and tenderness to that area. We don't see them in pediatric patients, usually or adolescents. It's usually in the middle age to older population. Okay. Uh, is this a painful condition? It, it looks painful. Absolutely. Um, a lot of times I think hammer toes are more painful than, than bunions. And sometimes the patient will come in with the concern of the hammer toe um, that's causing their discomfort and they have a massive bunion and they say, well, that doesn't bother me at all. So a lot of times it is the hammer toe that brings the patient in. Okay. Okay. Well, how do you determine that a surgical option is best for treating a patient's uh, hammer toe condition? Like, like most cases, it's if they've tried some conservative care, it hasn't helped. Um, but as the toe becomes stiff, meaning you can't, when you try to straighten the toe physically, it kind of is tight. It, it doesn't right. want to reduce. Um, and you've tried everything else, you know, then surgery really is the next step. Okay. Does this condition ever just uh, return to normal on its own or... How does that work? No, it does not. Um, and again, it's very similar to bunions. It's progressive. Um, early on, the symptoms are are usually very minimal. The toe is reducible, but over time, it starts to stiffen up. The pain becomes more severe. Calluses become larger. So definitely not going to go away on its own. <clears throat> After a successful treatment, can a condition like hammer toe return? You know, um, with and hammer toes in particular, they can be fairly unpredictable post-operatively. So surgically, we can put the toe in a perfect position. Right. Um, down the road, months, years, sometimes it may not stay in that same position. It can You can have some residual deformity afterwards, but hammer toes are up more on the spectrum of a more unpredictable um, outcome sometimes. Granted, we get good results with them, um, but they, they can tend to come back, you know, but not as severe. Okay. Excellent. Thanks for the information, doctor. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're here with Dr. Brandon M. Scherer, a foot and ankle surgeon with orthopedics and sports medicine Baycare Clinic. He is board certified in foot surgery and reconstructive rear foot surgery and ankle surgery by the American Board of Foot and Ankle Surgery. We're also joined by Sarah Burton, a doctor of nursing practice or DNP. She too is with orthopedics and sports medicine Baycare Clinic. We're here today to, to discuss foot conditions. We're talking bunions, hammer toe, foot arthritis, and more, and recommended treatment options. Right now, we're going to bring back Sarah. Oh, there she is, <laughs> for further discussion. Uh, Sarah, welcome back. And Dr. Scher, we'll see you in a bit. Uh, Sarah, let's keep the conversation going with uh, some more in-depth information. Uh, Dr. Scher explained for us the ins and outs of bunions and hammer toe. We're hoping you can help educate us about foot arthritis. Um, isn't foot arthritis simply to be expected with age? 
Not necessarily. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, it can happen at any age. We can see patients with autoimmune issues, rheumatoid arthritis that can have arthritis at a younger age. So what we're looking at on, on the screen here is the first metatarsal or the great toe arthritis mm -hmm. in the joint itself. And yes, as we get older, the thought is, is as we've been on it more, more wear and tear that we can definitely have more um, degeneration or arthritis to the joint, but it doesn't automatically mean that you're set up to develop arthritis. Okay. Um, what are we looking at with this image? <laughs> I'm not an expert, so I'm not sure exactly where the arthritis is or anything. Can you just point that out for our viewers? Absolutely. Um, so I don't know if you can see me, but um, so I'm- yes. Okay, so I'm pointing it out and it's right, what we call um, right at the end of the metatarsal here. So you see the white area? So yes. I put this white area right right in here. That's the arthritis. They've also had some arthritis down in this area as well. Um, so this patient in general, in order to treat the arthritis, very similar for treating a bunion, we actually would fuse that um, with a plate and screws the toe would be nice and straight up and down and the arthritis pain is alleviated. Okay, okay. So does a patient always need surgery uh, to treat foot arthritis? Absolutely not. Um, as Dr. Sher mentioned earlier, as time goes on, you've tried conservative treatment, conservative meaning anti-inflammatories over mm -hmm. the counter or prescribed. Sometimes we do injections, however, in the great toe, they don't work excessively great. Um, sometimes we can definitely try them. Sometimes people use any type of um, splints or cushions around it. Doesn't work the greatest either. So if you've tried um, the majority of those things, anti-inflammatories, Tylenol, um, then we're looking at surgical intervention. Typically, you'll know when the time is right. that You've kind of failed all those, those treatments. Okay. Um, and that actually was the next question. Like when does surgery become necessary <laughs> for addressing foot arthritis? In right, yep, so typically you'll failed. Um, you know, even if you come in and say, gosh, I've been taking anti-inflammatories. Um, right. I notice the pain when the weather changes, what else can I do? We start with getting x-rays as Dr. Sherrod mentioned with bunions and hammer toes. And really depending on the severity and what you've tried, we may recommend surgical intervention which would be typically, like I mentioned, a fusion for this patient. Right. So, you know, the other two conditions, the, the bunions and the, and the hammer toes, they're clearly visible to the patient and to the physician. They're, they're quite dramatic. Um, the visuals aren't as immediately dramatic with foot arthritis. I mean, even looking at the x-ray, I have an untrained eye, so I didn't really know what I was looking at. So how do you determine a person indeed has foot arthritis? So oftentimes patients will actually come in and say, I have pain when the weather changes. Oftentimes mm -hmm. that's, you've heard it with knees, shoulders, whatnot. Same thing with foot, ankle. Um, they can notice that the pain changes with that. As Dr. Sher mentioned earlier, you can get a bony prominence over the top of that great toe. That is essentially bone that you're kind of putting down in relation to the arthritis in that joint. So um, that bony prominence causes pain and it's an indication maybe not to the patient, but to us prior to x-ray that there's probably some arthritis going on there. Okay, okay. How often would you say you're treating uh, foot conditions such as bunions, hammer toe, and foot arthritis? Oh, in any given uh, day, I mean, those are very, all three of those conditions are very, very common. I mean, out of 100%, I would say in our foot and ankle practice, that's anywhere from 60, 65, 70% on any given day. Um, in surgery day, it's a very large amount besides going into right ankle, you know, going into ankle sprains and right. whatnot. Okay. Okay. And then how much of what you see and treat would you say is a result of injury versus uh, disease or lifestyle choices or genetics? I would say if you were going to rate those three in order, yeah. typically genetics would be first, um, then possibly injury and in, uh, injury and disease, I would pay, probably say it's tie for a close second, depending on what we're looking at. Um, obviously for these three things, it's more genetics and then like an autoimmune disease, rheumatoid right. arthritis, psoriasis, things like that, that is more prone to developing 
a degenerative joint disease um, or arthritis itself. Okay. Um, so we've talked primarily about bunions, hammer toes, and foot arthritis today. Um, but what are some of the other uh, common foot conditions that you and Dr. Shara treat? So we treat a wide variety. Plantar fasciitis is very common. Um, it is a yeah. very, very common condition. Uh, Achilles tendonitis, um, Achilles tendon ruptures, so and ankle sprains, high ankle sprains are um, multiple ankle fractures, and then ankle arthritis, people that need actually an ankle replacement. So oh. any anything like that, um, anything to the foot and ankle that if you have concerns or problems, we are the people to see. Okay, okay. What preventative measures can you suggest for better ensuring the health of our feet? So you wanna stay active. You don't want to, um, be that person that I know with COVID there wasn't much to do, but we want to be outside. We want to be active. We want to keep our BMI, which is our body mass index at yep. a normal weight. The more we carry it through our body, the more pressure we put through all of our joints, including our foot and ankle. So staying active is important um, to, to, to prevent that and having supportive, the right supportive shoes, not narrow toe box shoes, uh, trying to avoid excessive high heel shoes at all, you know, you know, for a hundred percent of your day if possible. Right. But shoe wear is super important to, to, we've got to take care of our feet. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Good conversation so far, Sarah. Uh, let's bring back Dr. Scherer. Welcome back, Dr. Scherer. There he is. All right. So um, before we get into, you know, our, our next round of questions, I, I do want to look to uh, some of the folks who have been kind enough to uh, ask questions on the on the live stream. Um, so we have a a question here, and maybe this is for you, Dr. Scherer. And I think this was when you were talking about uh, bunions and hammer toe. Um, she is asking, do toe separators help? And then uh, she says, with hammer toe. Yeah, so a lot of times what a toe separator is, it'll <clears throat> separate the big toe from bumping up against the second toe, or, you know, in, in this case, a hammer toe. So, um, yeah, so toe separators definitely help. Um, you know, there's a variety of different pads and sp spacers, but I have a lot of patients that come in that are seeing me for other things, and they're utilizing those all the time for their bunion hammer toes. And, I've you know, so they definitely can work, absolutely. Okay. Um, Sarah, I'm going to throw this question your way. Uh, this also came uh, online. Uh, can, the, can the amount of surgeries on a foot cause arthritis? Uh, for example, tarsal tunnel, plantar fasciitis. So, if, yeah, can multiple surgeries on a foot result in arthritis down the line? So if you're looking at a ligament tendon repair, tarsal tunnel is kind of like the carpal tunnel release of the foot. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, we're not doing any bony work. So we're not add, doing anything to uh, address the bone itself. So it should not affect arthritis. Now, let's say you have an injury and you have a fracture in your toe that needs to have you know, a surgery on or through the midfoot or something that you need to plate and screws, absolutely that you can get traumatic arthritis, meaning that arthritis because of that specific injury. But tendon ligament work, um, sure. any piece like that, that's not going to advance arthritis at all. Okay, great. Thank you so much for answering that. Uh, Dr. Scherer, uh, are there foot conditions that primarily affect older adults and others that you see uh, mostly in younger people? Are there some that affect older adults? Or are there some that primarily are in younger folks? Absolutely. You know, the uh, the older adults definitely are more affected by, you know, like we were just talking about arthritic conditions. Things mm -hmm. just wear out. The joints wear out. Um, if they had a bunion, typically that joint will wear out over time. Um, if they've had injuries earlier in life that damage the cartilage, um, you know, they'll develop arthritis that way. Chronic uh, disease of the tendon, what we call posterior tibial tendon dysfunction or chronic flattening of the feet can affect older individuals. Um, and then younger individuals, it's definitely more the congenital deformities, the injuries, the fractures, that sort of thing. But so I would say, yeah, you can kind of separate out based on arthritis in the older individuals and more injuries in the younger individuals. Okay, uh, Sarah, this one's for you. Um, and and I've actually, both of you have kind of addressed this, but for those just joining our live stream, I just want you to reiterate this. Uh, but can one's choice of footwear factor into the likelihood 
of experiencing a potential uh, foot condition. Absolutely. As we discussed earlier, if you weren't um, joined with us yet, uh, narrow toe box shoes. So the, having a narrow toe in it is oftentimes cute high heel shoes, um, shoes that have more than a few inches can increase the pressure around the toe, particularly bunions, hammer toes. It can cause more pain and problems. So having the right shoe wear, um, not wearing those type all the time is, is definitely suggested. Okay. And sticking with you, Sarah, and just another opportunity to reiterate uh, the the importance of like an increased uh, level of uh, activity. Mm -hmm. um, does a person's physical activity level correlate with potential uh, for foot conditions? For example, is a weekend warrior more likely to encounter a foot condition than say a guy like me who likes to sit and watch TV on the couch? You know, <laughs> Uh, so yes, weekend warriors, not necessarily bunions, hammer toes, or foot arthritis, but if you're looking at essentially an Achilles tendon rupture or Achilles tendonitis, um, ankle sprains, fractures, obviously, um, that can be with your weekend warriors, things like that. Um, However, it is very important for all of us to stay active, as I mentioned earlier, to keep our body mass index or our weight in and adequate for our height to prevent further damage arthritis down the road. But yes, there are things that can happen. We'd be happy to see you for any of sure. those problems. Sure. Okay. There are definitely things. Okay. There's uh, another question that has come in. It's a little specific, but I'm going to try to keep it uh, kind of generic. It sounds like uh, somebody has um, had issues with calluses. Um, any uh, advice on how to treat a callus? Yeah, I guess, um, you know, a lot of times you can, I guess the biggest way to keep a callus from coming back is to kind of find out wh why the callus is there in the first place. So looking at the deformity, looking at maybe the shoe not having enough padding, um, a lot of times we'll prescribe orthotics to offload where those calluses are forming. Uh, you can use, you know, corn, corn remover. It's kind of an acid to put on there. You can pat it to prevent the callus from coming back. But um a lot of times it's trying to figure out why the callus is there and, and addressing addressing right. that. Okay, good. Thank you again for sharing uh, your expertise with us. Uh, now, uh, a couple questions about your qualifications as specialist, right? So, Dr. Scherer, uh, you're a board certified uh, foot and ankle surgeon, uh, certified in foot surgery and reconstructive rear foot and ankle surgery, right, by the American Board a foot and ankle surgery, that's, that's a lot. Uh, you're also fellowship trained uh, in foot and ankle surgery. So you've had a ton of education and extra training, right? On top of all that, you do research on foot and ankle issues, publish in prof professional journals and present at professional conferences. What does all that mean for the care that you provide your patients? Well, you know, and I, I look, I've been practicing about almost 11 years now. So I look back at that training and um, it was definitely good. And, and I'm always kind of staying up on, on the literature and, and okay. trying to kind of push the envelope a little bit with um, getting our patients better. But, you know, a lot of it is just practicing. I've been in a large orthopedic group for almost 10, 11 years now. And um, not all these, not all these surgeries turn out perfect. And sometimes there need to be revisions. And so you gotta have somebody that's gonna take these cases on that's gonna be able to take care of the revisions too, not just the primary surgery. So I think all that training and then practicing, it all kind of comes together and um, hopefully it helps the patient the best way. Great, great. And Sarah, uh, you've read a lot too. <laughs> you're, you're a doctor of nursing practice. Uh, how does that make you especially qualified to treat your patients? So having my doctorate as nurse um, practitioner, I uh, have advanced training and knowledge and um, background, not only in orthopedics, but I'm a family practice um, uh, certified. Um, but orthopedic wise has been my love. I've been in orthopedics with our group for the last 13, almost 14 years. And I also am certified as an orthopedic uh, nurse uh, took a certification test. So my knowledge just from a variety of backgrounds from my right. work history, my advanced schooling, um, getting my doctorate, uh, besides being just a registered nurse, and I don't want to say just because that's yay. Right. Um, <laughs> right. But 
uh, all of that brings me in, in the experience. As Dr. Sharon mentioned, uh, he has the experience of the 11 years plus of being an, a surgeon. It's the experience of working with um, patients every day for the last nearly 14 years in orthopedics. Great, great, that's good stuff. Thank you so much for that insight, both of you. Uh, all right, Dr. Scherer, uh, if patients are dealing with symptoms that they think might be related to any of the conditions that we've discussed today, uh, what do you suggest uh, should be their course of action? I guess the first thing to start with would be to make an appointment with us. Um, just give, you know, call our clinic or make an appointment online um, and get in, have us take a look at it, get some x-rays, um, answer your questions. And, you know, if you have an injury or anything like that, our clinic will see you same day, we'll get you in um, and address, address your needs. But that would be definitely the first thing to start with is get in there, let us look at it and put your mind at ease. Okay. Uh, doctor, what happens if people simply ignore their, their foot pain or just, you know, fight through it? You know, I usually tell patients the longer it's going on, the further you push it out. Um, usually the less chance you're going to respond to some of the easy, non-operative, conservative uh, options we have for you. Sure. If, it's, if you're pushing it to a chronic, multiple deformity type of situation, um, you may be looking at surgery sooner than later um, right. than, than if you got it addressed earlier. Okay. Okay. Sarah, are, are there foot symptoms that we would be wise to seek help for sooner than later? Absolutely. As I mentioned, the weekend warriors and Achilles tendon rupture, you don't want to put that off. Right. Um, ankle fracture. So you have a traumatic injury, accident, fall. Uh, you can't wait there. You need to be seen sooner than later. That's not something you want to push off because the right. outcomes um, can be affected because of that. Right. Okay. Sarah, we're sticking with you here. Um, are referrals needed to see you, Dr. Scherer, or anybody else in, in your practice? Not at all. I mean, they're welcome to have referrals from a primary care doctor, urgent care, ER, or whatnot, but they're not needed. Unless your insurance requires it, we do not need to have a referral from a primary care doctor. But again, that's an insurance thing, so some insurances require it. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Scherer, uh, anything you want to add today? I'll, I'll hand you the mic and you can take us home. No, absolutely. This has been great. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, you know, we'll try to get them answered, but it's been good. And uh, again, um, if you ever need to see us, give us a call, make an appointment online. Again, you don't need a referral and come in and see us. We'll be happy to take care of you. Okay. Excellent. Dr. Scherer, Sarah, thank you so much for your time today and for sharing your expertise. Thank you. And thank, and thank, thank you. And thank you all for joining us, our viewers. If you have additional questions for Dr. Scherer, or Sarah, please ask them in the comments section. We'll continue to answer them online. Uh, again, Dr. Brandon M. Scherer is a foot and ankle surgeon with orthopedics and sports medicine Baycare Clinic. Uh, Sarah Burton is a doctor of nursing practice, also with orthopedics and sports medicine Baycare Clinic. Uh, to learn more or to request an appointment, please visit baycare.net. We thank you very much and you enjoy the rest of your day.